Hey everybody, welcome to NAB Show Live. I'm Dave Curley. I'm Alex Lindsay. The intrepid Alex Lindsay. Intrepid? Yeah, you're intrepid. Isn't there a ship called the Intrepid? Oh, yeah. yeah, exactly. Excelsior. Yes, exactly. We are here at the NAB Show in Las Vegas, Nevada, and this is kind of um, paradise. Yeah, this for is us. It's kind of the highlight of the year. You know, I've yeah, been, I think I've been I think I've been coming now for 20 years. We're talking 20, about 20 20 years. See, actually, this year, 20 years. Okay, so uh, in '91, when I started college uh -huh. and started learning how to edit and do everything, we um, our our professor said, "Hey, do y'all anybody want to go to NAB?" You right. know, and it was like you know, $2,000 or something like that for to do it. And so college budget, I said no. But ever since then, I've never gone. This is my first oh, really? time. Yeah, industry uh, professional. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, we've been, we've been doing stuff, streaming and, you know. I, I started out as a demo artist. Nice. So I was, I, 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 my job was here. It was, used to be over in the sands. You know, ah, long, yes. long Sands time yeah. ago. dating yourself. Yeah, I know yes. exactly. So yes. the little, the little multimedia one. You know, like I don't even know what part of it is that, but parts of the central hall, or whatever, were over there, and it was just these little. And I, there was a company called Electric Image that was a three D animation. I remember animation. Electric Image. Yeah. So I was a demo artist for Electric Image, and that was my. That's how I learned how to do. Uh, went to NAB and. And then I started. Then I was press and then speaker and all that. Yeah, other and stuff. your mother and I are very proud of you now. You've really, well, thank you. you've really thank come you. a long way. So anyway, so it's it's great to be back. Yes. We're having a good time, and we've got a great. Um, this is a, Sam Bogosh from Axel Thanks. Video. Great and to be here. Thanks for joining us. Good, good to see you. Yeah, yeah. So, so what are we what are we doing here? What is Axel? What are we doing? Yeah, here? I see Axel. I mean, NAB, of course. Yeah. But uh, so basically, this is our third year at NAB. So we're a pretty quickly growing little startup. Uh, based in Boston, mm -hmm. and our mission in the world is to make it really radically simple for people to manage all the videos that they're shooting. Yeah, uh, and we're shooting tons of yeah, videos. Yeah, we, we got to talk actually because yeah. I, you know, I'm just looking at the operation you have here, it's like, hey, these guys could probably use our stuff. And, and the, the kinds of people who use our stuff are shooting a huge amount of video, but they, they need a database because otherwise they just get piles and piles of hard sure. drives and Drobos mm -hmm. and NASs, and they can't find anything after a while. So what we do is we basically point that, uh, our software at that kind of storage volume, catalog what's on it, and then mm -hmm. present it through a browser. And you can do sort of Google style searching through the browser, yeah. you can preview things, you can scrub, you can do mark ins and outs and say, hey, let's use this in the final edit. Can we, so can, uh, just, can we generate uh, basic EDL lists or shot lists or anything? Exactly, for yep, we generate a shot list and then that goes out to the editor. So, Great. you know, we work with Final Cut, Premiere, mm -hmm. and now we also have Axel Gear Pro, okay. which handles Media Composer formats as okay. well. And, so we and when you say Final Cut, you're talking about Final Cut 10? Seven and 10. Seven, seven and 10. 7 okay. yeah. is still mm -hmm. widely Seven's still used. around, hanging yeah. in there, but if obviously all the news. What's wrong with you guys? It's what the grown-ups use. use. Uh. It, it's, it's sort of like, I mean, Editors are real dyed-in-the-wool people. Like once they start yeah, using yeah, something, yeah, 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 um, yeah. there are still people out there using things like Avid Meridian, right, right, which right. I mean, what was that probably back when you yeah. were doing those electric image yeah, demos? Exactly. People are still using that because it's like it works for them and it was tried and true. So same with Final Cut 7. It's not quite as old as that now, yeah. but there's a significant market share. People mm -hmm. still using that. Mm -hmm. And so, and, and they're not getting a, so when you're, when you're composing this, so some, and someone can go onto the browser and start to put together an edit, yep. um, and, and this is really an assembly? I mean, that's really what they're what It's, they're it's a combination of search, archiving, and assembly. So mm -hmm. the, the idea is, first of all, you gotta bring the media in. Mm -hmm. And instead of doing it helter-skelter, we just recommend that you use a shared file system which yep. you guys are probably doing. You know, you have sure. like network storage, you put everything in folders, and you mm -hmm. organize it as best you can. The big gap that this happens. This includes adding all the uh, metadata and stuff. Well, that's where know. it's tricky, because there, there's no clear way to do that that's right. searchable later. Right. You would actually have to go and open all those files to find that metadata. Well, see, currently I'm using um, uh, Adobe um, Bridge. Bridge, yeah. Right. And, and generating them, and that's how I'm searching for my stock. And that's good for a single user. That. For right. a single user, Bridge is, is a perfectly good exactly. choice. Where it breaks down is, I got three or four people, and we got to search a shared volume, right. and we've all got to know what each other's doing, and I want to send this guy a note saying, hey, I found your footage right here, here's the pointer to mm -hmm. it, that kind of stuff. And Bridge kind of breaks down, and there are some other traditional tools that also kind of break down for the groups. And we estimate that there's about 100,000 groups worldwide. It could be as little as two or three people, or as many as 30 or 40 people. Sure. But, but those teams that are working with video now are everywhere. They're in universities, they're on the web, 
They're, you know, of course, in traditional broadcast and post environments, but they're also in corporate America, mm -hmm. in, in religious organizations. Mm -hmm. We've got a lot of churches as customers, and also sports teams. So we have teams like the New York Yankees mm -hmm. and the LA Dodgers that use our software. Um, so it, it's, well, it's and, kind and of everywhere. Well, and there are multiple sites as well. Is, they can be. I mean, yeah. it, it depends. Sometimes it's just a little team off doing their thing, and then we find out later that another little team in the same company right. took well, it on. And, and, and basically what's happening is you're pointing your software towards it. Right. And then it's going to go through there. It's going to catalog everything. It's going to build low resolution proxies. Uh, proxies. H.264 proxies, right? is exactly. So those are tiny little proxies that yep. we can, you get in, how big How big are the proxies? They're one megabit per second. Perfect. Okay. Yep. And so, um, so now you have, I have all those proxies, people can view them. Now I can have an assistant go in and start adding data to it. You got so, it. So all of that stuff is now being added into that web, that web client so yep. that anybody anywhere on an iPad or whatever can see all that, exactly. can search for it. Um, yep, and you then, got it. And then, and then I'm able to then build assemblies if I need to. And pass it to an editor right. for finishing work. And that editor is going to get an EDL. Exactly. And, and now does your software also help them retrieve all that? All that? Well, what's cool is we, we make the assumption that the editor is actually connected to the same storage. Right. Mm -hmm. that, that the other person was uh, connected to. If they're not, we allow you to download the media to where you are. So if you're at a remote location right. and somebody else finds the three or four clips that you're really going to need, they can point you to those. The other thing we can do now, is... Now, these are the proxies that they'd be able to download? No, that's the cool part. Okay, you can, so get, they can download your full. choice of the proxy okay. or the high res Great. We also have an integrated version called Axel Gear where we include some transcoding software from episode, mm -hmm. and we can actually subclip those out. Because nobody likes to transcode two hours of HD footage. Right. Right. But suppose it's only 30 seconds that you care about. Sure. You can clip that out, download that a lot quicker. Good. So right. there's a lot of nice workflows that people you know, are able to do with the software. And what, what do we have on here? So this is our latest product. We're announcing it here at the show, and it's called Axle Edit. Okay. What happened is a lot of our customers do use Axle with their iPads and their iPhones, mm -hmm. and they came to us and kind of said, wouldn't it be nice if I could do a little more of the editing process on my mobile device? So instead of like just searching and handing it off, if I could actually go in and do some, some basic rough cuts. So what you can do in Axel Edit is actually you have a timeline view of the media. You can drag that media from Axel down into that timeline. You can then trim it. You can do audio controls. So for instance, if I click on this, I can, I can adjust the, the volume of the mm -hmm. audio. Uh, I, can, I can do a, you know, audio fades in and out. Mm -hmm. So, you know, Can you normalize or any of the, the, the basic audio editing? Simple, simple stuff. Okay. This is a 1.0 brand new product. Sure. We're just announcing it here at the show. And basically it'll work with any of our, of our media management products. Okay. The, the iPad app is free from the App Store. Mm -hmm. And you, you basically then just download that and combine that with the server side. What's cool about that is that you can actually do a lot of your edits on proxies. Because as you can imagine, rendering HD on an iPad from sure. an edit is, is a bit of a stretch. Sure. So we let you work in proxy on the iPad, mm -hmm. then you hit send, and it renders it on the server side in HD. Mm. And from there you can go to the web or to air or what have you. So and, and so when you hit send on that, so when you're editing this and you're yep. and you're putting those together, yep. uh, when you render that, it really is rendering the final po possibly the final version. Exactly. Right. And, so. and yeah, it's it's a dynamite product. We just came back from a conference in Dublin called MojoCon. Mm -hmm. It was Mobile Journalism Conference. Mm. Right. And it was like hundreds of really top tier TV and print journalists, they were all going there to just figure out you know, how to do what you guys do, basically. Yeah. They're all using Meerkat, they're all mm -hmm. using Periscope, they're capturing, they're trying stuff. Mm -hmm. um, we actually have a company called The Padcaster that's going to be in our booth, yeah. and they do, you know, you know it, those we, guys, we, right? Yeah, we do, we've yeah, actually yeah. worked with them a bit. So they'll be in our booth at the show, S and can I give the booth number? Is that Please. SL16015, we're at the back of the South Lower Hall. So the Padcaster guys are going to be demoing their stuff with Axel Edit, and then tying it all in with, with the workflow in our booth. So Fantastic. it's going to be pretty exciting. And, there, and, and when you're shooting locally, though, it still needs to go to the server first, right? So they're going to. Correct. So someone shooting with, a, with an iPad or an iPhone would shoot it and then send it to the server. That's get right. Get it onto the server, get the proxy back, and then combine it with, the, with other footage that they might well, have. Well, what's neat is actually you can kind of trickle that up to the server so you, you don't need from to. From your laptop? Fr no, from the iPad oh, itself. Okay. So whether it's 4G or Ethernet right. or, 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 sure. uh, or Wi Fi, you're, you're basically just pushing in the background uh, your high res is up to the server, then the rendering happens, and then you come out with your high res finished. Material. So okay, so if I'm out in the field uh, doing a job for Pixel Core, and um, I've shot some interviews or something, if I'm in my hotel room, can I, you know, through my VPN connect yep. to my back end? Yep. Through your software, 
can I just start ingesting it into my back end that exactly. way, or do I need to? No, no, that's go. exactly it. You okay. do it through the VPN. And, and your software is just going to look at the photo library. Right, and, and, and you can and select which ones you want to send. It right, it'll also do it based on the sequence, so once you create your little sequence locally, mm -hmm. it'll know which clips to, to bother sending up. But you can, what's cool here is, of course, you can combine those with B-roll and other footage that you might have on the server. Sure. So you're like, oh, I like this, I like that, I like that, and I just shot this stuff. And we actually have a video, if you go to our website, axelvideo.com, mm -hmm. A-X-L-E-V-I-D-E-O.com, mm -hmm. we have a new video that shows this. We, we actually did it at a, at a hockey game. Uh, you know, just the reporter goes to the hockey game, shoots footage, combines it with B-roll, and then puts it together into a, into a package that goes to air. No, oh, that's great. So, yeah. so, and I just want to make sure that I've got it all clear. Sure. So, I'm, so I've got, uh, so I can grab the foot, this uh, editing software will grab the footage that's on my iPad. Yep. And I can edit it there. Yep. And then send it, and it's only going to send, now I can send, can I set head and tail that it's going to send out? It's not. The first version of it isn't smart enough to know what part to upload. So it uploads all the clips that the you clip, use. The whole clip, okay. but, yep, it, yep, it, but it doesn't fine. upload the clips you didn't use. Yeah, that's great. In the future, we might get smarter about it and, and selectively, kind of like we do you with know, the downloads right now. Right. It would be really cool, of course, if it was smart enough to only upload what you need also, but it's not, you know, it's not there yet. You know, I'll tell you, I would, I would actually prefer that it don't because I've, been, I've adopted and I'm teaching your mantra that footage doesn't exist until it's in at least two places Ideally, three or four. That's true. Right. So, especially when it's an iPad, it's like, oops, I left my iPad at the at the exactly. food counter. Yep. Well, there goes your footage. You know, exactly. this this kind of gives you a, a, a second channel. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. Yep. Is there any limitation? Does it doesn't it'll use whatever it has? So if you're on LTE or that's right, you know, whatever start, bandwidth, whatever it's got. whatever it's, whatever it can get a hold of. So the other thing to be careful of, of course, is if you're on a capped. You yeah, know, you, know, you, just, you use just, it up just, pretty quick. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's true, and we don't we don't look out for that. Um, but that's where Wi-Fi comes in, obviously. Absolutely, and, and people, absolutely. Yeah. So we're, we're really psyched about the product, and it's a companion to our existing MAM products. You know, the the MAM story itself is is actually a pretty key one, though, because. We, we feel like 95% of the footage that people are shooting out there today is not managed. They right. have no way to search it. Sure. And uh, you know, I, I've been doing digital asset management and media management now for, for quite a while. I was, before this, I was at Avid uh, doing the Interplay products. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you know, we would handle the, the biggest, you know, most demanding requirements, Avid still does, at the high end of the market. Right. But it just occurred to me and my colleagues that there was this great opportunity for tens of thousands of people sure. who needed the same thing, but at a smaller scale. Well, I know this is something that, that uh, we uh, at Geeks Life could, could use. This is, I, I drill into my team the, the staying organized, yep. following, following my file structure, my naming yep. conventions and all this or kind else. of stuff. Yeah, or else, because, yeah, yeah. because you know, if, uh, if, if Carter's doing something, and then he leaves for the day, and I need to finish it, I need to be able to jump in and pick up and, exactly right. and know, even on his hard drive for his local storage, I need to see the same thing, so I can go exactly right. the yeah. same place. And I can, I would I, on mine. I can also see this as for big events, you know, conferences and so yep. on and so forth, having everybody shooting and ingesting and getting everything in there, yep. and then and then somebody else just pulling that pulling. And this is a desktop application as well. As uh, a, so the, it's a browser application. Basically, we do browser, okay. and we, then we do the native iOS. So I could okay. actually be doing this on my Chromebook. Uh, you could, you yeah. could. I mean, I'm not the not the actual edit part, but the the browsing but and the searching, absolutely, yeah. yeah. And and to your point about events, we have a customer in Europe that does this at like all the big music festivals. Mm -hmm. They right. go out and they shoot the music festival. Uh, they actually use uh, uh, the Telestream Wirecast products to, to mm -hmm. live stream right. it, but then they capture it all in storage mm -hmm. and they use Axel to catalog it. That's great. And they're getting like massive, like millions of YouTube views, you yeah. know, and corporate sponsors and all this stuff. They really set up their own broadcaster, mm -hmm. uh, and it's like five guys in a van, basically. Right. It's, it's amazing what you can do with, with fairly lightweight, affordable technology. Okay, so uh, your your software, the or the new... Um, Axel Edit? Yes, Axel yep. Edit. This is out now? It's available now. We're shipping in May, okay. so, you know, a few weeks, but, yeah. Okay. And uh, basically, to give you an idea of the pricing, uh, our, our media management solutions start at $995 okay. and go up from there, and Axel Edit starts at $795 for two users. Okay. So you, you could configure a complete system. They run on a Mac Mini, basically. Mm -hmm. uh, you can also put it on Mac Pro. So you can configure a complete system for about $5,000, mm -hmm. including the hardware. And of course, we have, we have customers, big broadcasters, that have spent you know, ten, fifteen thousand dollars on bigger systems, but but you can get. This is the first time, really, that media management has been approachable like this, where like a normal person or two mm -hmm. could just get it up and running without yeah. like a sysadmin and right. a you know, installation team and all this stuff. Fantastic, fantastic, fantastic. Sam. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank really you so much for joining us. Thank you. And, Thanks uh, a lot. Enjoy the show.
Thank you. And uh, lots of luck to you guys. Great. Thanks. Thank you guys for joining us. Um, we're actually going to uh, we're going to cut here for just a sec. John P's going to join us, and uh, we're going to do a little roundtabling mm -hmm. and geeking out, and hopefully you guys will enjoy it. Uh, I'm Dave Curley. I'm Alex Lindsay. Thank you all for joining us. We'll be right back. <laughs>